My name is Hygienist, my friend. And I have what I think is a unique perspective that I call hygienism. And in St. Lucia, although I tried my best to restrict, to prevent myself from getting involved in what's happening in St. Lucia, but at this point, I think, I think politicians need to be controlled. And I think there is this young lady, Miniva, who, who speaks about a certain politician who runs a certain talk show. And the young lady, I think, is doing what anybody should do, because as long as, if you're a public figure, you need and you must expect criticisms. And for a man who is criticized, who as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, whose lifestyle has been questionable and runs a talk show, bullying people, disrespecting whoever challenges him, calling people names, asking people to prove him wrong. And when they attempt to prove him wrong, he, he, take, he takes back stories or things that happen when Little girls were little girls and grown ass men were hunting them down to throw it in a young woman's face at this time because she's challenging you. What is happening to the women of St. Lucia? I, I, do you need you too or me too to help you resolve your feminine problems, your problems where women have been disrespected by grown ass politicians? I, I don't know. What is, what is happening? Why does this man feel invincible in St. Lucia? What the hell is wrong with St. Lucians? That you have people that you'll elect into offices who come in and stand as dictators. You understand? If you listen well, look well, I'm not going to sit and wait for people to join in or to come into my life for me to start talking. I'm going to tell you what I want to say now. If you want people to hear what I'm saying, you could share it if you want to. But I don't understand y'all in St. Lucia, how y'all have this man, this absolute jackass, this absolute piece of garbage, this absolute rubbish, this absolute, I, I, I don't know anything good to talk about this man, this absolute, no leader, no leader whatsoever. Good morning, Miss Masrin, Miss Christian Masrin. I hope you're having a good day. I don't think no leader whosoever should, should be able to take a position to stand in public and disrespect people. People who do not support you. People who criticize you the way this man does. This man has no right to do those things that he's doing. And if he chooses to do that, then he should not be in politics. He should not seek to represent the people of St. Lucia. And you all need to let him know that. You don't have to wait for the polls. Who say you have to wait? To, who say you have to wait for the polls? Who say you have to wait for the polls to tell to tell let politicians know when enough is enough? When enough is enough, what are you afraid of? You're afraid that he would send people as far as I hear. I don't know. Is it true? Is it true that Mr. Richard Frederick has people that he could send out to destroy, to eliminate people who criticize him, people who threaten him? Is it true? Is it true that the people are so afraid for their lives that people are afraid to target Richard Frederick? Who is this piece of garbage that people are afraid of? What is wrong with y'all? You're voting people that you're afraid to straighten up. A man can come on and it is obvious, it is obvious, St. Lucians, it is obvious that at the time this piece of garbage he did what he's supposedly saying that he did with Miniva. Miniva was a little girl. Under 20. Basically. She was under 20. Then this man is so shameless. He's shameless. He's coming on his show. And he's challenging. He's challenging the same report about the program, about the impacts report. Challenging it and reading the allegations made against him. If those allegations were made against me, what would you all do in St. Lucia? Would you all just shut your mouth up? No. But you'll have a man 
who is on his talk show, I'm not saying what many of words said, on his talk show, he's defending, he's defending, or uh, uh, attempting to defend the things that people say about him on a show, and reading what people say, a certain person was going out, killing and stealing drugs for him. He said it, not me. Richard Frederick said it. So who the hell is Richard Frederick to stand up and say in public, to say to the globe, to say to the world, that he, Richard Frederick, is accused of paying people to kill people for him. You have a leader, a leader in government that you have just issued. Philip J. P. is a jackass too. I'm not sorry for saying it. You have a leader who is accused of all of those things and you have just issued him a damn ass diplomatic passport. Richard Frederick, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. People need to be prepared to stoop down as low as they need to stoop if they have to stoop to deal with bullies. And I have daughters. I have daughters. I have daughters, I only have daughters, and Richard Frederick has daughters that is boasting in America about their accomplishments. How would you feel, Mr. Dog, if people, if your daughters were treated the way you treated this young woman, and now coming in public and talking about the way you treated this woman? What type of thing do you think you are? You think you, you're worth anything because you have money? You think money gives you class? You think money can buy class? Money may be able to buy love and loyalty, but then the money you pay for loyalty, any top dollar can overpay your loyalty and switch it on you. Money cannot buy class, brother. Money cannot buy class. You have no class. And why would St. Lucians even answer and I'm disappointed in Anson. And I told Anson that personally on his show. I'm disappointed in Anson. The Anson I know. You stand and dis and, and defend that piece of garbage. You stand on your show. You stand on your show, Anson, to defend with passion that piece of garbage, Anson. Should I lose respect for you? Should I lose all respect for you? All politics aside, if it was a flabo, if it was anybody else, my good friends, ask my friends and they will tell you. I tell my friends straight up, I have no respect for men who treat women that way. Young girls, under 20 young girl, you had an affair, you're talking about, oh, Miniva, um, do you remember a certain guy who drove a certain sidekick and and he stopped at a certain place and then oh me, 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 sir, let me ask you a question now you don't have to answer me because i don't listen to your bullshit show because you cannot help me your show can i help me i have never attempted to listen to it because if you mention my name there i will not know because i don't listen to it and i never ask anybody what people say about me because when i speak in public i expect Unlike you, I expect to be criticized, and I respect the criticisms. Okay? So listen to that. Are you saying to me that when Miniva, according to you, was running after the sidekick, huh, are you saying that you probably had, had another certain young girl on the sidekick at the time that you had already kicked Miniva to the curb and you're already considering or dating another young, maybe a, a younger one, 16 year old, maybe in St. Lucia, the age of consent is 16. But how old were you then, Mr. Frederick? How old were you then? How old were you when you chose to drive your sidekick when little girls, little, little girls who are vulnerable, little girls who probably like men with vehicles and like men of status and class, or supposed class in it because you have no class, you're a piece of garbage, and talk to them and board, let them board the vehicle, pretending to give them rides, and in the rides you're giving them, you show off and you start talking and front your stupid ass bullshit class in the face and try to get into the, in, into the panties. Is that what you're saying, that you had another certain young woman? That you had no more time for me, neither? Is that a type of man you... Oh, well, I know that's the type of man you are. I mean, people talk about you. People talk about you the same people talk about me. People talk about everybody else. 
They're talking about you. So who are you that people should not talk about? You're a public figure. You have a big ass show. People follow you. People listen to you. People watch you all over the world. You can I help you? So now you're saying to me that people cannot criticize you because you the great Richard what? You the great Richard what? Who are you? Who do you think you are? That you, you and solutions have not stood up against you. That you, that piece of garbage, can stand, can stand on your talk show and disrespect, defame, denigrate a young woman and uh, a young woman who you took advantage of when she was a child. You are a grown ass man and you will talk about it and Mr. Philip J. Pierre still has you in his office, what is Philip J. Pierre afraid of? What, Mr. Philip J. Pierre, tell me. Tell your St. Lucian, your St. Lucians who voted you into office. Not as Prime Minister, you know, they voted you in Marshall and became Prime Minister. So, but tell us, St. Lucian, who support you as Prime Minister. What are you afraid of? That you will ask questions. You ask questions about Richard Frederick, about, about the, the, in the impact report, and you claim that as Prime Minister you do not know. So you're saying to me, Mr. Frederick, is this what, let, let's be a little bit realistic. Richard Frederick works, Richard Frederick was, worked in the Prime Minister's office. He works in the Prime Minister's office. He is the Prime Minister's main man in the Prime Minister's office. He is in America, supposedly, people are celebrating that Richard Frederick just got his visa, his diplomatic visa back, and he's in America showing off, fronting the lives of his daughters, the accomplishments, and whatever. The Prime Minister is coming up a few days after, a few days after Richard Frederick, but Richard Frederick wants to bump and run down to St. Lucia while the Prime Minister is in America. Mr. Richard Frederick... What did you run back to do in St. Lucia? Did you run back to St. Lucia to, 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 to get into the Prime Minister's office to check out the documents and to hide the results of the impacts? I don't know, because he said he does not know. So if Mr. Pierre does not know about the impacts report, does that mean Mr. Frederick Laird got his hands on it and hid it from the Prime Minister or like, or like switched it with some other piece of garbage? I don't know. You have to tell me. I don't know. I'm only asking questions. How can I know? I do not know. I'm not a politician. I'm not in cabinet. But pieces of garbage like you have no place in cabinet. You have no business having diplomatic passports, diplomatic visa, diplomatic anything. You too low life for that. You are low life. Richard Frederick is a low ass life. Sometimes you need to stoop down to those pieces of garbage level to straighten them up. And if nobody would stoop down to your level, Mr. Frederick, I don't even give a damn. Because you need to stop your bullshit. You need to stop it. You need to stop it. You're not untouchable. You think you're untouchable? You're not untouchable. People like you have come and they have gone. Who the hell do you think you are? To disrespect the woman. To disrespect the young lady. To disrespect her. Who are you? Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? You think people and everybody are afraid to confront you all because the power you have is given to you by the people. And the other one that you have, that you think you have, you know how this one is vulnerable. You know how this one can be taken up just like that. What do you think you are? Who do you think you are? I don't know, man. I don't know. But I'm disturbed. I'm disturbed when people, when people who are elected by the people feel as if they are not on a accountable to the people that they do not have an obligation to respect the people that the people of St. Lucia cannot or the world wherever they are cannot criticize them you are in a public office people have a right to criticize you people have a right to challenge you and if you're a dog they have a right to call you a dog and you have to just take it and go None of my friends can say, none of my friends can say, I ever called them and asked them, um, what did so-and-so say about me? 
people come and talk about people say that I, I don't believe this, I don't believe that. I never ask them who to say it. People have a right to interpret con communication, conversation, however they see fit. People can only interpret conversation based on their level, based on their experiences. Not everybody has your experience. But show us your experience. Show us your mature. Go back on your show and extend an I don't like apologies, you know, but people in your status, people of your social stature, you should be able to go on your show and put out a dumb ass apology to Miniva Ward. And St. Lucian should demand that of you, Mr. Chastney. You think I was not going to come to you? You think I was not going to come to you, Mr. Chastney? Why are you silent on that, huh? A man in politics, a man in politics is taking on a young woman, reminding her of things that he did to her when he was supposedly, or the, or the person who was driving the sidekick, a certain person, I don't know who, maybe I have to start investigating who was driving that sidekick at that time. A person who had a particular sidekick was taking advantage of a young convent student and Mr. Richard Frederick is on his show attempting, supposedly, making fun or using that to denigrate, disrespect, defame, discredit the young woman. And Mr. Chastney, Ferropodius, where are you? Where are the other women in politics? What are you all doing? What are you all saying? Aren't you all saying anything too? Are you all silent? No, you all have nothing to say about that. Should I be disrespect? Should I be? Should, 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 should I be? Should I be disappointed in, in your behavior? I don't know. Y'all need to tell me. I just don't know. I just don't understand what is happening in Saint Lucia. Is it okay for politicians to do those things to people? Is it okay for Richard Frederick to continue in Saint Lucia as a leader and think that he is untouchable? Are y'all okay with that? Are y'all okay with that? Are you okay with a man that y'all voted to represent y'all, feeling that he is invincible, that he is untouchable, that he can have a show that, and listen to that, you know, I have women who are my friends, who are supposedly my friends, who when Richard Frederick said a nonsense, start talking about me never want Richard Frederick to fuck her. Excuse my language, but that was what they said, it communicated, so don't, don't challenge me when I use the word that they used. Mr. Frederick wanted to fuck. Fred, 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 she wanted Richard Frederick to fuck her. And because Richard Frederick is not fucking her, she mad. So do you all even understand? Do you all even understand what Miniver Ward was saying? Do you all question what she was saying? Do you question, do you have any doubt that what she was saying about Richard Frederick in concerning the impacts report was true? Isn't that what she was talking about? Was she was talking about the relationship with Richard Frederick? Was she was was she talking about how 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 she felt hurt and broken hearted that Richard Frederick, the supposed grand ass man, who was taking advantage of her as a child? Are y'all is that what she was talking about? Was she talking about how she is still hurt and how she still misses Richard Frederick in her life? How she needs him in her life? Is that what she was talking about? Was she was why wasn't she talking about Richard Frederick as a fake ass political or a fake ass politician? Isn't that what she was talking about? Isn't that the subject that you need to be concerned with? Isn't that the subject you need to be concerned with? The subject you need to be concerned with. Forget the politics, you woman, you stupid ass woman who wanted to disrespect the woman because of the garbage, the nonsense Richard Frederick spewed out. And you'll take that and talk about it as if, as if, as if, oh, oh my goodness, when will you learn to respect women? Oh, no, 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 no. The church, Father Albert, the church, you know, Father Albert, the church that did it, Father Albert, because the church have people believing that women should not be trusted because women are like Jezebels. They are betrayers of men. Women are like what? Women are like um, 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 the so-called Eve in the Bible who would lead a man to fall. So, Father Albert, the church, the church too, responsible because people see women as that figure that continues to try to disrespect women and get away with it because women are supposed to be on a supposed, on a supposed lower class. Are you people hearing those things? 
Are you people understanding the kind of things that you have been accepting? No, 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 no. Look at it again. Let me just show you something again. If people who supposedly use women as that that lower class, that lower class in society, just look at it. If you look at it in the same authority that people want to use, the woman in that Bible story, there were there were women who were so virtuous that they controlled and dominated the men. They led the men to power. They led the men to power because of them. Their sons became great. Because of them, their sons became great kings, great leaders. Women were not, were not second class. They were never, ever second class. Because the great men who had their mothers always loved and elevated and uplifted their mothers, carried them on pedestals. That's what women are. That's why in the same Bible that you read, ask the question. Because of all that talk, it has a question, who can find a virtuous woman? So maybe, maybe Richard Frederick needs to understand that. And St. Lucians who support Richard Frederick and the nonsense that is talking about Minerva Ward need to understand that. A young woman who is taken advantage of by a grown-ass man is not liable in any way for her actions. And then that same grown-ass man, you're in St. Lucia, who support Richard Frederick, are standing, collaborating with Richard Frederick to defame her, to continue, to continue to attempt to destroy her reputation. Where are you all going with that nonsense? It's about time. Richard, it's about time you people of St. Lucia let Richard Frederick know, and Mr. Philip J. Pierre, I'm saying it to you straight up. I will be on your case, Mr. Philip J. Pierre, because you need to let Richard go. I don't care if you're keeping in whatever. You need to make Richard go, Philip J. Pierre. People, if you, if you really want your freedom, Mr. Shasta, People of St. Lucia want their freedom. You as the opposition leader, you have not written to the Prime Minister based on that. Richard Frederick has disrespected every woman in St. Lucia and Richard Frederick must go. He has to go. You cannot keep him anymore. He has to go. We are tired of his disrespect in St. Lucia. Aren't you tired? If you're tired, then you need to say it. Richard Frederick must go. And don't just stop at saying it. You need to act upon it that Richard Frederick must go. And anyone like Richard Frederick must go. Mr. Stevenson King, not running away from the subject, you came in and you boast that you are now among, among honorable men. The men you were with before were not that honorable. But now you are bunch along with alongside Moving around, honorable men. But Mr. Stevenson King, did you hear? Mr. Stevenson King, did you hear? Did you hear what Richard Frederick, your colleague in cabinet, your colleague in government, is said about a particular young woman? Mr. Stevenson King, you need to stand and say, Richard Frederick must go. You need to say, Mr. Frederick must go. But then, are they serious about Richard Frederick going? Because this certain guy, what's his name? This guy who has had that battle for that car with the government and caused a lot of problems in custom. I don't need to know his name because to me he's not important. But when he, when he, when he got into government, his own words, you know, his words, not what I was told, his words, they did this, they did that to me. And now I am in government. I can do the same thing to them. This man too must go. Why do you tolerate those things? People can come and use the positions that you gave them in government. And they could threaten regular common citizens with that office. And they are still sitting there. Those people must go. And listen to me. I am not saying much you do. But if this is what the St. Lucia Labour Party government has come to, if this is what the St. Lucia Labour Party stands for, the St. Lucia Labour Party needs to go. Let them go and let them rest and let them sit 
and let them lower their, their chins in their palm of their hands and let them rethink the positions. And if they regroup and are suitable to lead again, then you could reconsider them. But for now, those people must go because your politicians, your government right now do not care about you. Your government does not care about you. The government of St. Lucia does not care about you. Richard Frederick must go. Don't you agree that Richard Frederick must go? If you agree that Richard Frederick must go, you need to share this. You need to let every single person know that this piece of garbage, this piece of garbage must go. And listen, tell him, for those of you who will talk about me to him, I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because bullies need to be dealt with. I don't like bullies, and bullies don't bully me. Because if you bully me, my life, my life does not worth much to me under a bully. Because if a man bullies you, you could as just well die, right? So why do you let a man that you vote for, a man that you elected, a man that you put in office to represent you, come out and bully a young lady. And he's not bullying her about things that happened when she was an adult. He's bullying her about things that happened when she was a child. Somebody just said she was 17. How old was he? She was 17, Richard Frederick. How old were you? You're obviously already a police officer, out of the police officer, out of the police force, went to wherever you went to study, studied for a number of years, then came back to St. Lucia, practicing law in St. Lucia. So you must, you must have been a really grown ass, probably close to 40s. So I'm talking. You were a grown ass, 40 something year old man, and you had a relationship with a 17 year old girl, and today you have the guts. You have the guts. You have the guts to come on your show and talk about Oh, a certain man who drove a certain sidekick. And Mineva Ward saw the sidekick. And she was running after the certain sidekick. And when the sidekick stopped, you asking Mineva Ward, what did the driver of the sidekick say to you? Mineva Ward, will you please tell us what the driver of the sidekick said to you? Maybe we need to know. Maybe we really need to know what the driver of the sidekick said to you. And Miniva Ward, don't be ashamed. You're not held accountable. Please just tell us. Please just tell us. I am dying to know Miniva Ward because Richard Frederick didn't say who the driver of the sidekick was, but he said, he alluded to the fact that you probably know who the driver of the sidekick was. Can you please on your show, whenever your show is held, can you please tell St. Lucians who the driver of the sidekick was at the time and how old you were. These count. These matter. These are important. And you need to tell us. Now, Mr. Frederick, you might want to challenge me and say, um, who am I? My name is Aginus Masre. I'm not afraid of any man. I may have done things, but most of the things that I have done, I don't have much regret for them because they were the path to my experience and they led me to where I am. But what you've done, what you've done right now, I hear people question you and your, and your scruples. To me, a man's scruples is a man's scruples. Your scruples is whatever it is, whatever you need to do to survive, that's your business. I don't give a damn about that. I don't care what you sell, who you sell to, who your boys are, whatever your boys are. But I'm saying to you straight up, as a leader, as a politician, you have failed. I said that to you about a few, about 10 or so years ago when you stood up and talked about the secrets about your people. And I think we, you and I had a personal chat on Facebook where I told it to you too, where I said it to you and you wanted to know, who are you? Tell me who you are. Who are you? Who are you? I don't know, maybe you're not as wise as people think you are. Because I was having a conversation with you on Facebook. My picture was there. I was there. 
and you're asking who I am. Well, tonight I'm saying to you, my name is Aginus Masri. And know well, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to target the shepherd. Because I know one thing. And St. Lucians need to know one thing. If the DPP understands that he needs to, according to what you said, needs to make arrest in the death of the man, then the DPP needs to make arrest. And from what I'm hearing, there's been conspiracies to get the DPP fired. St. Lucians, you need to get up. If the St. Lucian Labour Party administration causes the DPP to be fired, y'all need to take the streets and make sure that this government ends this year. Go. Y'all need to make them go. If the DPP is fired, if the DPP is fired, if the DPP is, co is caused to, to vacate his office, y'all in St. Lucia need to take the streets. Y'all need to line up by the parliament. I know a certain person is being now it's been now challenged. He was in pitch for making statements like that. But I'm saying it to you, people of St. Lucia, you don't need to go to the parliament and make sure that those people responsible for taking out the DPP go. They need to go. Y'all need to take back your country. Y'all need to remind the politicians that the jobs that they have, y'all appointed them by election. Each one and every one of you, those who voted for them and those who did not vote for them, y'all need to let them know that they are accountable and you are holding them responsible for the actions if the DPP is, is caused or is forced to vacate this office. And if we don't see the arrest, and if we don't see the arrest recommended by the DPP, then y'all need to know what to do. Mr. Chastain, the DPP made a recommendation, Mr. Chastain. You're supposed to be the eyes and ears of the people. Mr. Chastain, Mr. Chastain, and to the ears of the people, and to their eyes, and to you, their mouth, and you're supposed to be representing them, Mr. Chastain. The DPP, Mr. Chastain, made, recommend, made recommendations. What is happening? Tell us who should be fired. Tell us who should be arrested. Who should be arrested? We need to know. Police officers, police chief, who needs to be arrested? Make the arrest. Make the arrest. Listen to me. There is no shame. There is no dishonor in dying in battle. Because once you're in battle, your responsibility is not to walk out a life. Your responsibility is to make it, let it be known that you opposed what is happening. And if you die in the battle, you die with honor. It is better to die with that honor than to die in shame. But listen to this. Your need to make Richard Frederick the bully go. And the, 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 who, is this show on a, on a TV station or it is just like a Facebook show? Whatever it is, that show, Philip J. P. should have told Richard Frederick, his cabinet members, all of them, Sean Edwards, Sean! Listen, listen, I'm not questioning men and women and what Men do with women, and which woman give man sex, and how men have sex with women. That's my business. My business is a certain young lady, a certain young lady, Miniva Ward, is being accused by Richard Frederick for running after a sidekick that was packed by the St. Joseph Convent, and she was chasing the sidekick, and the sidekick stopped, and the driver of the sidekick said something to her, and Miniva Ward supposedly agreed that the psychic, and she, in her conversation, in her rebuttal, she supposedly she alluded to that fact that maybe the psychic driver was Richard Frederick. I don't know. But Mr. Sean Edwards, are you aligning, are you standing with Richard? 
My people of my people of Grand River, my people of Denny River, my people of Belmont, my people of Garden, my people of Olio, my people of Dubonnet, Von Panache, Lakai. No, not Lakai. Lakai is is Denry. My people of Belmont and wherever you're from in, in Denry North Constituent, are you that is Sean get away with that? Is Sean standing with Richard? Fair up audience, what is happening? Is Sean Edwards standing with Richard Frederick? What about this woman? This woman from, 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 from Viewfort, Emma. Is Emma standing with Richard? Hey, is Prosper standing with Richard? Are those people standing with Richard? Are those people standing with Richard against Miniva? Are they standing with Miniv with, with Richard against Miniva and NBC? I was just told, thank you, Miss, Mr. Stephen. NBC, you need to cancel Richard.